good morning today we will discuss about atmospheric pressure now in our previous classes we came to know how temperature that is one component of the atmosphere varies across the earth surface as well as uh, with altitude and according to the variation of uh, temperature different conditions particularly different weather and climatic conditions are found in different places of the earth now apart from pressure another important component of atmosphere which also plays a significant role in earth's weather and climate of a particular region that is atmospheric pressure so the first question is what is air pressure now as the air is composed of some gaseous molecules and those gaseous molecules have some uh, weight so therefore these gaseous molecules exerts a pressure that is the weight of those gaseous molecules that pressure or that weight is known as atmospheric pressure or air pressure now the standard sea level pressure is about 1013.2 millibar or we call it 1013.2 dyne per centimeter square the highest recorded till date atmospheric pressure was found about 10 it is found in the year 2001 at mongolia similarly the lowest recorded non tornadic that means it is a calm weather condition no such cyclone or heavy wind that means hazardous condition was not there in a calm steady condition the lowest recorded atmospheric pressure was about 870 millibar it was found in the western pacific region in 1979 at the same time the lowest recorded atlantic ocean there the lowest recorded pressure was found about 882 millibar during the time of hurricane wilma in the year 2005 so these are the some uh, data some records about the uh, about the pressure variation over art during different times and these are the highest and lowest records found over the art now the pressure is measured by instrument which is known as barometer at earth surface we found that different points have different pressure and that amount or that value of pressure varies from point to point from location to location so the if we imagine a line which connects the pressure values having equal amount of pressure values of all the points over the earth surface then we can draw a line which joins the equal pressure points that line is known as isobar now generally it is a common practice that the variation of pressure that means the isobars are normally drawn at an interval of 4 millibar but there are no definite rules people can draw at any uh, interval value now each and every point over the earth surface the pressure value that is atmospheric pressure is not constant it varies from time to time so pressure is not constant specially as well as pressure for a particular location or for a particular point is also not constant temporally 
it varies with time so each and every point of the earth surface they have a tendency to increase the pressure value or decrease the pressure value now if we draw a line joining the equal barometric tendency that means where the pressure is rising or falling by the same amount in a given period of time that line is known as isobars now anemometer is an instrument to measure the wind speed now coming to the factors controlling the air pressure or atmospheric pressure we know that the gas law states that the air pressure is uh, directly proportional to the product of air density and air temperature so we can write a simple equation that is air pressure is equal to density multiplied by temperature multiplied by a constant now pressure decreases rapidly with height particularly in the lower part of the atmosphere that is in the lower part of the troposphere now why this happen because previously we came to know that atmospheric pressure is the weight of the all the air molecules above any uh, certain point or above any certain level so it follows that at higher elevation pressure is less whereas at lower elevation pressure is higher now this increase or decrease in pressure with altitude is basically the result of the gravitational force the pull of gravity it basically compress the air molecules more towards the earth surface so the density of gas molecules is found higher close to the earth surface but as we increase the altitude as we go up from the mean sea level there the gravitational attraction force will be lower and thereby we found in a certain volume of water less number of gas molecules because the gravitational force gradually decreases with altitude so if we try to get the value of air pressure at this point close to the mean sea level or close to the earth surface there the number of gas molecules over this point will be much higher compared to this place where the number of gas molecules will be lower so thereby the pressure close to the earth surface will be higher that means close to the mean sea level will be higher and as we move towards higher altitudes towards mountain tops there we found lower atmospheric pressure lower air pressure that is why uh, doctors or scientists told us whenever we are going to visit a uh, hilly terrain mountainous terrain uh, in the himalayas doctors advise us to acclimatized that means your body should cope up with this changing atmospheric pressure condition now as atmospheric pressure condition is directly related to the atmospheric gas molecules density that means as we move up through the altitude that is in higher elevation you will get less amount of oxygen molecules there so if we quickly move towards higher altitudes you will get suddenly or your body will suddenly receive less amount of oxygen 
so often you may faint and sometimes in extreme cases um, heart fail will also occur so that is why acclimatization is necessary to cope up with this uh, lesser amount of oxygen in higher altitudes and in still higher cases the mountaineers who are regularly climbing the higher altitude like the everest the kanchenjunga they are carrying the oxygen cylinder among with them because at that altitude level the density of oxygen becomes too less that your body cannot cope up so this is the main reason that the gravitational force that basically attracts the gas molecules more towards the mean sea level and thereby gas molecules are more concentrated close to the mean sea level and atmospheric pressure is higher but as we move towards higher altitudes the gravitational pull gradually decreases and thereby the density of atmospheric gas mole molecules also decreases and air pressure also decreases now apart from the gravitational force temperature is also a significant factor which governs or which controls the air pressure previously we came to know that because of the different amount of insulation received at different places of the earth surface the temperature condition of the earth surface vary from place to place so depending on this the air column over any two given points say for example city 1 and city 2 they will suffer or the, they will get different amount of terrestrial radiation so if the two cities or two points receives different amount of terrestrial radiation from the earth so one city may be more warm that means it receives more terrestrial radiation and thereby with increasing temperature the atmospheric gas molecules they are more dispersed more widely spaced their volume will increase so per square unit area number of gas molecules will be less in comparison the city or the point which receives less amount of terrestrial radiation the temperature condition of that place is normally cold compared to city 2 so as the atmosphere of this city receives less amount of terrestrial radiation so the gas molecules will be more concentrated over this city that means the density of gas molecules per unit square area will be higher compared to city 2 at the same time you can see that the height of the gas molecule or height of the atmosphere in city 1 is less compared to city 2 so that is why in equatorial region which receives more amount of insulation and thereby the atmosphere receives more amount of terrestrial radiation there the height of the air column will be much higher compared to the polar regions or high altitude regions which receives less amount of insulation energy and thereby the air column receives less amount of terrestrial radiation so that indicates that how thickness of atmospheric column also varies with temperature so surface heating basically generates low pressure because the density over any given point 
will become lower whereas surface cooling generates high pressure and this is a uh, block diagram you can see if we move from warmer region to colder region you can see due to the differential heating the gas molecules will be more increase their volume will be more sparse and thereby the uh, average height of the air column in a warm region will be higher compared to the average height of the air column over any cold region so that is why in the polar region the atmosphere is thinner whereas uh, in the equatorial region that is in lower latitudes the thickness of atmosphere is comparatively higher now coming to the pressure systems there are some maps produced we at uh, many standard levels and these maps are the isobar maps that showing the variation of uh, pressure of different points over the earth surface now generally as i already told you generally the isobars are drawn at uh, 4 millibar interval but there are no definite rules when the isobars are above the normal value and they form a kind of clustering they form a kind of circular nature of occurrence of the isobars then the nature or pattern of the isobars is known as high pressure region or simply hive so here the value of isobars the value of pressure increases towards the center and it is designated in the map as capital h similarly the opposite that is when there is a class clustering of isobars belonging to less than the normal values that is the value of isobar gradually decreases towards the center this is called pressure low or low pressure region or simply low now often it is found that an outward extension of high pressure into a region of predominantly low pressure is found to occur this elongated high pressure region shape is known as ridge similarly the elongated shaped or extended low pressure area is known as trough now they are found a area of almost uniform pressure between the two highs and two lows this region or this area having the uniform pressure bounded by the two highs and two lows is known as coal now what is wind what i call wind is the movement of the atmosphere or atmospheric gas molecules so whenever the atmospheric gaseous molecules are moving horizontally then only that moving atmosphere is known to us as wind now apart from the horizontal movement of atmosphere there are vertical movements are found to occur within the atmosphere 
and that vertical movements of atmosphere or atmospheric gas molecules are known as updrafts if it goes up and if it goes down then it is known as downdrafts now if we look at the pressure system over the earth we already found that how uh, temperature controls or temperature uh, affects the pressure of any given point that is the atmospheric pressure of any given point so increase or decrease in temperature of any given point also causes to change the density of gas molecules over any given point and thereby the pressure simultaneously also goes increase or decrease now when the density of atmospheric gas molecules due to low temperature will be higher density of gas molecules is higher that means the pressure is increased and when due to high temperature the density of atmospheric gas molecules decrease that means pressure becomes low now from our previous class we already know that the equatorial region receives maximum amount of insulation so the temperature in this equatorial region is maximum compared to any other latitudinal position over the earth thereby the equatorial regions are the zones of intense heating that is the zones of decreased air density that is the zone of low atmospheric pressure at the same time as we move towards the higher latitudes the points over the earth surface receives lesser and lesser amount of insulation thereby those places in the higher latitudes they will be much cooler compared to the equatorial region that means temperature gradually decreases more towards the higher latitude regions so the density of air molecules gradually increases towards higher latitudes that means the air pressure gradually increases towards the higher latitudes so if we look at the uh, belts or certain regions having this kind of air pressure we found that at the equatorial region due to intense heating a low pressure zone develops and in the polar region due to cooling extreme coldness high pressure region exist now if earth is not a rotating body if earth was a static body then there will exist only the low pressure region near the equator and high pressure region near the pole so the heated air rises near the equator and always that heated air which having uh, low density that will move aloft towards the low pressure region alternatively we may also called that whenever the heated air is rising in this equatorial region the surface condition becomes vacant the heated air rise 
so this places the surfacial condition at equatorial region becomes a void becomes a vacant place so to fill up this void to fill up this vacant place the dense cold atmosphere from the polar region that will move as surface wind towards the equatorial region so you will get a convection shell of wind due to this differential heating air heated more in the equatorial region that less dense air becomes uh, light in weight so it spreads or it goes upward towards higher uh, altitudes and to fill up this vacant place in the surface the cold dense polar air that moves along the surface towards the equatorial region and simultaneously a circular shell found to occur in both hemisphere from equator to polar region so there exist a low pressure belt in the uh, equatorial region and a high pressure belt in the polar region in both hemisphere now as earth is rotating around its own axis so when this rising air from the equatorial region goes up that in the higher altitudes in the higher level of the uh, troposphere this hot air emits its energy and gradually becomes cooler now this cool air moves towards the higher altitude and ultimately it will come down to the earth surface near about 30 degree latitude in both hemisphere so this latitude at this latitude near about 30 degree um, north and south where the subsidence and contraction of uh, air molecules occur they are form a high pressure belt because because of this subsidence because the gas molecules uh, lose their temperature at higher atmospheric levels and they become cool cooler and cooler and also as these gas molecules goes up the heat source from where these gas molecules receives energy the distance between the heat sources also increase so the gas molecules gradually emits the energy as well as they will not get any further energy from the terrestrial radiation so gradually they become cooler and cooler and ultimately they will sink or they will subside near the 30 degree north and 30 degree south latitude condition so due to this subsidence the gas molecules at this latitude condition will be contracted will be more compressed so there exist a high pressure belt which is known as subtropical or tropical high pressure belt now if it goes to the polar region the polar region the atmosphere is dense the atmosphere is high so at the polar region a high pressure region exists that is the polar high in both poles that is in north pole and south pole and this high pressure or cold wind blows along the surface towards low latitudes at the same time the air sinks 
at 30 degree latitude in both hemisphere when they hit the earth surface it will divide it into two parts one part goes as surface flow towards the equatorial region and the other part goes as as surface flow towards the higher altitude higher latitudes towards the pole from polar region another cold wind comes as surface wind these two opposite character winds one is hot the wind coming from the subtropical high that is hot whereas the wind coming from the polar highs that is cold and dense now when these two surface wind collides with each other due to the difference in temperature of these two winds the warm air starts rising over the cold air so when they these two meet the cold air from the polar high and the warm air from the subtropical high they collide at about uh, 60 degree to 70 degree latitudes the warm air due to their its low density that will rise that will move up over the cold dense air so another rising of atmosphere occurs atmospheric gas molecules occurs in this subpolar condition in this 60 to 70 degree latitudinal condition and here also forms a low pressure belt so another low pressure belt formed here so if we now see the number of high pressure and low pressure regions number of high pressure and low pressure belt across earth we found that the equatorial region there forms a low pressure region or low pressure belt due to the sinking of the atmospheric gases near about 30 degree latitude in both hemisphere a high pressure region occurs that is known as subtropical high at around 30 degree latitudes in both hemisphere due to the collision of polar cold dense air and subtropical uh, light warm air at around 60 to 70 degree latitudes another high pressure uh, sorry another rising of air happened and low pressure zone develops in this latitudinal condition and ultimately at pole due to the uh, contraction of air molecules due to this extreme cold condition a high pressure condition or high pressure belt exists so overall across the earth surface at different latitudes altogether seven pressure belt exist the equatorial low pressure belt subtropical high pressure belt in northern hemisphere and subtropical high pressure belt in southern hemisphere the subpolar low pressure belt in northern hemisphere and subpressure subpolar low pressure belt in southern hemisphere the polar high in northern hemisphere and the polar high in southern hemisphere so altogether seven pressure belts exist over the earth surface at different latitude conditions now these pressure zones are also not constant in position the pressure zones also migrate with the shifting of the solar equator that is with the change in direction of axial tilting so in january they are found further south 
and established over Tropic of Capricorn. So in this region, which is previously the south subtropical high, here exists the equatorial low. So in during January, when there is winter in the northern hemisphere, the equatorial low shifted towards the uh, Tropic of Capricorn towards southern hemisphere. Similarly, during June, when the sun is over the northern hemisphere, that means summer uh, occurs in the northern hemisphere, then the equatorial low shifted towards northern hemisphere and lies over the Tropic of Cancer. So with this shifting, the all other pressure belt, all other pressure region over the earth surface also shifted simultaneously towards north and towards south. Now the question comes, why winds blow? This needs to examine that what are the forces that affect the uh, already i mentioned that the horizontal movement of atmospheric gas molecules is known as wind so what are the forces what are the factors that affect this movement of air because in the previous slides we uh, told that uh, the wind movement occurs across latitudes from high pressure region to low pressure region so what are the forces which governs which drives this wind movement yes sir hmm. okay. so the forces or the factors which is responsible for uh, horizontal movement of air the first force is the pressure gradient force the second is the coriolis effect and the third that is known as friction or frictional force now coming one by one first the pressure gradient force the pressure gradient force is basically generates when there is difference in pressure between two points over the earth surface and that creates the pressure gradient force due to this pressure gradient between the two points over the earth surface moves from higher pressure to lower pressure regions now if we try to define the pressure gradient force it is the difference in pressure between two given points divided by the distance between those two points and it is mathematically uh, expressed as pgf that is the pressure gradient force is equal to delta p that is the difference in pressure of any two given points and it is divided by the distance that is written here as small n the pressure gradient force exists whenever there is a difference in air pressure from one place to another now differences in air pressure can be caused by difference in air temperature or difference in water vapor concentration between two given points this difference in air pressure cause the wind blows or cause the wind to move from the high pressure region to the low pressure region and this force this pressure gradient force is always directed 
at right angles to the isobars. Now, if I look at the arrangement of the isobars, the closely spaced isobars means that the air pressure changes rapidly with distance. Here you can see the isobars, these black lines are very closely spaced. That means the distance between two successive isobars is small. So thereby the change in pressure between these two given points is very uh, high compared to the distance covered between these two given points. So with minimum distance or with uh, small amount of distance change, yes. the change in pressure occurs. <coughs> At the same time, widely spaced isobars indicate that the air pressure changes only slightly with distance and thereby the pressure gradient is weak. So you can see in this picture that in the right side is happening more quickly with little change in distance whereas change in pressure occurs in the left side occurs with more surficial distant coverage that means here the change in pressure that is the pressure gradient is higher whereas in the left side the pressure gradient is low thus when the air is subjected to uh, greater pressure on one side than on the other there occurs an imbalance and this imbalance produce a net unbalanced force from a region of high pressure to a region of low pressure the pressure difference between these two regions cause the wind to blow from one point that is from higher pressure to lower pressure the greater the difference of pressure between the two given points the higher the amount of wind is blowing from one point to another that means if the difference in pressure between two given points is higher the more and more amount of wind is blowing from high pressure to low pressure region that means the wind speed is increasing with the greater difference of air pressure in other words you can say that the steeper the pressure gradient that means the more close the isobars occurs there the wind speed is higher and oppositely the more distant the isobars occurs the wind speed in this region is lower so if any given map this kind of occurrence of isobars are found that in the right hand side the isobars are closely spaced whereas in the left hand side the isobars are uh, more distantly spaced more widely spaced so immediately from the difference in distance between two successive isobars you can get an idea about the flow of wind about the speed of wind the speed of wind will be higher in the right hand side where the isobars are more close to each other whereas the speed of wind that is wind moving more gently in the left hand side where the isobars are more distant to each other now 
in the atmosphere the pressure gradient force that is abbreviated as pgf it is the only force which drives wind to blow from high pressure region to low pressure region so whenever there was a uh, closed platen of uh, occurrence of isobar is found and in the center there is the high pressure high occurs so wind is moving from the center towards the peripheral part of this closed pattern of iso uh, closed pattern of isobars similarly in a closed pattern of isobars if in the center there is uh, pressure low exist then wind wind flow from the peripheral part towards the center that is wind will converge towards the center now in the atmosphere the pressure gradient force is generally directed perpendicular to the isobars now this pressure gradient force can be divided into two components one is the horizontal component due to which basically the wind movement occurs which uh, which functioned um, parallel to the earth surface and the other component of pgf is basically vertically above so uh, we that the pgf can be uh, divided into two components one is the horizontal component then we can that we can symbolize that as ph that moves parallel to the surface and the other component that is the vertical component that moves up that we can write as pv now the vertical component of the pressure gradient force is very large but this upward directed force is nearly balanced by the force of gravity which basically acts uh, act downwards which basically uh, pulls all the materials towards the earth's center so one force that is the pv acting upwards from the surface and the gravitational force acting downwards now when there is an exact balance between these two that is the vertical component of the pressure gradient force and the gravitational force when there is a balance there will be no upward movement of air that is no vertical movement of air this balanced condition is known as hydrostatic equilibrium condition so the pressure gradient force the pv that is the vertical component of pressure gradient force is when balanced by gravitational force that is the hydrostatic equilibrium condition so only component of pgf is acting that is the horizontal component of the pressure gradient force and that is why wind is moving parallel to the earth surface now as air masses move around the globe so that movement occur due to uh, changes over the earth surface and that is occur due to mainly the uh, horizontal component of the pressure gradient force now along with the horizontal components of the pressure gradient force at certain points the vertical component was not balanced so at those points upward or downward movement that is vertical movement was also found to occur and that is why wind at some points rising and at some points wind is found to sink over the earth surface now 
due to this sinking due to this convergence of wind into the earth surface there exist areas of high pressure which is called anticyclones similarly due to the uprising of air or due to the divergence of air towards higher altitudes from the earth surface there exist low pressure areas and these are known as cyclones or depressions so the low pressure areas over the earth surface are known as cyclones or depressions whereas the high pressure areas over the earth surface are known as anticyclones now both these anticyclone and cyclone they show different weather patterns generally anticyclones are more uh, widely spaced that means more aerial coverage are found and they generally show a calm weather condition a stable weather condition with clear skies whereas in depressions or in cyclonic condition the area is evidenced by more cloudier wetter and windier conditions now cyclones that form over the warm tropical oceans of earth are known as tropical cyclones they are also known as tropical storms or tropical depressions here you can see all these cyclones are mainly occurring near about 20 to 30 degree latitudes of both uh, hemisphere a tropical cyclone that drastically increases in intensity is known as hurricane when it occurs in the atlantic oceans or adjacent seas in the western pacific oceans and adjacent seas a hurricane is known as typhoon so in different oceans in different places the tropical cyclones have different names in atlantic seas it is known as hurricanes whereas in pacific seas it is known as typhoons now apart from the occurrence of uh, cyclones in the tropical seas cyclones may also occur in the extra tropical or near the subpolar condition about 60 to 70 degree uh, latitude conditions these are known as extra tropical cyclones or temperate cyclones now there are some characteristic difference between the tropical cyclone and extra tropical cyclone the tropical cyclones are generally circular in shape the cyclone develops over generally seas they affect smaller areas that mean aerial coverage is low in tropical cyclone wind velocity is higher they are prevalent in summer season in contrast the extra tropical cyclone they are having a v-shape because in this temperate region in nearly 60 to 70 degree latitude condition the warm matter from warm uh, wind from the subtropical region and the cold wind from the polar region they collide with each other and due to this collision the front generates which is basically a v-shaped in shape these extratropical cyclones developed over land and seas in both cases they affect a larger areas wind velocity is generally less in the extratropical cyclone compared to the tropical cyclone they are mainly found in the winter season so these are the differences of tropical cyclone and extra tropical cyclone now coming to the second point or the second force which governs uh, the movement of air from point one point to another over the earth surface the second point is the known as the coriolis force or rather saying coriolis force the more appropriate term is the coriolis effect because it is um, not any uh, particularly force like the uh, pressure gradient force we previously discussed 
this is an apparent force that is found to occur due to the earth's rotation now because of the rotation of the earth around its own axis there appear to be an additional uh, force acting over the moving air due to this wind does not always cross the isobars at right angle this deviation of the direction of wind is result because of the earth's rotation and it has been named as coriolis effect the effect is named after the who first mathematical mathematically expressed this deviation of wind when wind travel across latitude the french physicist gaspard de gustave coriolis according to his name the effect is named as coriolis effect now what happens in the coriolis effect suppose there was a platform which is in static condition that is not rotating and two people are sitting over this platform on the two edges so if one people throwing a ball towards the other people that ball will move in a straight line fashion in contrast if we consider a rotating platform and at the same way two people are sitting oppositely in the edges of this rotating platform now the first people it he or she is throwing a ball towards the other people now when the person is throwing the ball towards the other people the initial position was in this condition here this person is throwing the ball to this person like this one but as the platform is rotating during this traveling time of the ball from this point to this point the platform changes its position so ultimately this man does not receive the ball rather the ball reaches this point so from the point of view of this person the apparent path of movement of that ball is in a curved fashion now this curved fashion of movement of the ball occurs due to the rotation of this platform so this is the coriolis effect this causes due to this coriolis effect it basically causes any free moving objects that includes winds that includes ocean water currents they are deflected whenever they are moving across latitudes in the northern hemisphere the moving objects deflected to the right of their path and in the southern hemisphere the moving objects deflected to the left of their moving path now the rate of curvature of the moving air is directly related to the velocity of the wind to the rotation of the earth obviously coriolis effect will not be will not be there in a unrotating object only in a rotating object and over that rotating object when other thing are try to move from one place to another then only these kinds of effects are found to occur so the object that is earth must have rotating the effect or the deflection due to the coriolis effect will depend upon the object speed that is the velocity 
the more velocity of the object that is the moving object the more will be the deflection lesser velocity lesser speed of the moving object the deflection will be lower and it will also depends on the latitude of earth that is at which latitude condition the object is moving now how latitude is affecting this deflection if you consider two points over the earth surface one at the equator and one close to the pole now we know that each and every point over the earth surface take around 24 hours to complete one rotation around its own axis so the point over the equatorial region that have to cover more distance to complete this rotation in 24 hours whereas the point near the polar region that have to cover less distance to complete this rotation in 24 hour so thereby to complete one rotation in 24 hours the object in the equatorial region as it has to cover more distance that is the um, surfacial um, distance covered along the equatorial region so thereby the object should have in higher speed in contrast the object close to the polar region that has to cover less distance in 24 hours time so the speed of that object will be less now if we look at the difference in velocity difference in object speed in 24 hours time it will be highest in the equatorial region and it will be lowest in the polar region so as we move from equatorial region to polar region the speed of an object to rotate around r to rotate around the earth axis in 24 hour time that will be gradually decreases say for example for a rotating art an object in the equatorial region the speed will be uh, say for example 1600 kilometer per hour to complete its rotation uh, in 24 hours time so in the uh, 40 degree or 45 degree latitude the object may be take or maybe the speed will be 100 kilometer per hour sorry 1000 kilometer per hour because this object has to cover less distance near a polar region uh, say for example the object's speed will be 500 kilometer now this speed is to cover the rotational distance which they will cover during 24 hour rotation at the same latitudes so the point is that speed of any object close to the equatorial region is higher and as we move towards pole it will be lower so if one mob object is moving across latitude say for example wind because of the differential heating across latitude wind is moving across latitude so when wind is moving from equatorial region to the high alti high uh, latitude regions from this latitude to next latitude the speed difference is there so wind is moving from higher speed latitudinal position to lower speed latitude position so reduction of speed happens thereby deflection due to the coriolis effect will be lower in contrast when wind is moving from polar region towards the low latitude areas from pole to low latitude areas so basically wind is moving from high speed region 
sorry from low speed region towards high speed regions that means we will be subjected to more rotational speed regions that forces the deflection due to the Coriolis effect will be higher. So Coriolis effect acts at right angles to the wind and it only influences wind direction but never wind speed. Depending on wind speed, the deflection will be higher or lower, but itself Coriolis effect does not influence the wind speed. Now, at the surface, air in higher pressure system, that is in anticyclones, they will blow clockwise in the northern hemisphere, and air in low pressure systems, that is in mid latitude uh, cyclones they will blow in counter clockwise fashion in the northern hemisphere so the opposite is true for southern hemisphere the anticyclones in the southern hemisphere they will blow in anti clockwise fashion and the cyclones in southern hemisphere they will blow in uh, clockwise fashion in the southern hemisphere now here you can see the deflection as i am saying you in the previous slide so when near equator if wind is moving along the equator there will be no deflection if wind is moving from equator towards the polar regions towards the higher latitudes the deflection is relatively low it will be right side in the northern hemisphere it will be left side in the southern hemisphere and you can see deflection is maximum at the pole that is the wind is moving from pole towards the low latitude areas that is wind is subjected from high rotational speed region sorry wind is subjected from low rotational speed region to high rotational speed region and thereby depending on this speed difference the wind deflection will be more Now coming to the geostrophic winds. So up to now, we are concentrating mainly on the surficial winds. That is the movement of air along the earth surface. Apart from there, apart from the surficial winds, there are upper level winds also. That is uh, higher in the troposphere. Now the parcel of air or the parcel of wind that flows parallel to the contours in a straight flow fashion and it basically results uh, from a balance between the pressure gradient force and Coriolis force because these two forces are acting almost uh, perpendicularly almost uh, oppositely to each other so when they are balanced the pressure gradient force and Coriolis force are balanced, wind starts to flow parallel to the isobars with the horizontal pressure gradient force balanced by Coriolis force. This balanced and ideal wind is known as geostrophic wind. So basically what happens, wind is moving towards higher latitudes and due to the Coriolis effect, deflection of wind found to occur in the right side towards northern hemisphere and with continuous movement with continuous deflection to the right hand side ultimately one situation arises when the wind is not crossing the isobars but rather wind is blowing parallel to the isobars at same pressure condition and at this situation the pressure gradient force and the Coriolis force acting oppositely and they balance each other. So this kind of ideal movement of air due to which wind uh, ultimately moves parallel to the isobars, that wind is known as geostrophic winds. That means when the wind moves parallel to the isobars. 
but in nature these kinds of wings are rarely exist because wings are only considered truly geostropic when the isobars are straight here you can see the isobars are straight and there are no other forces acting on it but in nature it is most commonly found that these isobars are not occurring parallel or not occurring in a straight line fashion so until or unless the isobars are on in straight fashion are in straight line we cannot call it at a geostrophic in that means wind cannot flow in a straight line fashion and thereby it will not form a geostrophic wind generally if it occurs if geostrophic wind occurs it is found around 3000 feet higher altitude condition another condition when the isobars are really straight as i told previously generally the isobars are bent isobars are carved in a haphazard fashion when isobars are bent there is a third force acting over the wind movement along with the pressure gradient force and the coriolis force because due to this coriolis force the bending of wind movement is found to occur and due to this bending there occur or there act another force that is known as centrifugal force or you, the opposite is centripetal force and the resultant wind movement due to these three different forces the resultant wind is known as gradient wind in this case the pressure gradient force must be balanced both the centrifugal force and the coriolis force so coriolis force needs to be shortened so that the coriolis force plus the centrifugal force stays equal to the magnitude of the pressure gradient force so due to the curve nature of the isobars there is always a tendency of the uh, moving air to move towards the center or to go away from the center that is the centrifugal and centripetal force so along with the coriolis force along with the coriolis effect this force this centrifugal or centripetal force that should also be balanced by the pressure gradient force when these two forces that is the coriolis and centrifugal force are balanced by uh, pressure gradient force then winds moves in a curved fashion in a bent fashion and then we call them as gradient winds so in nature geostrophic winds rarely occurs in most cases what we found that is the gradient winds the third and the final force affecting wind movement that is the frictional force now friction works in opposition to pressure gradient force so it basically restricts the movement of air from high pressure to low pressure region in the lower troposphere the horizontal wind encounters strong frictional resistance as it is in contact with the ground surface over which it is uh, blowing now all objects over the earth surface including the water surface including the grasslands the trees the buildings they have different resistance force that means when air is moving over these uh, surfaces due to the friction they basically resist the wind movement and because these surfaces 
the water surface, the tree, the buildings, the grasslands, they have different roughness values. They add different resistance force. The rougher the surface, the greater is the frictional resistance. So more rough is the surface, frictional resistance will be more and thereby the resistance force acting over the moving wind will be higher and higher. Now the effects of friction are more pronounced close to the earth surface because close to the earth surface the moving air encounters all the objects over the earth surface. So the greatest friction occur close to the earth surface thereby the greatest reduction of movement of wind also found to occur close to the earth surface and almost close to the earth surface except the uh, cyclonic condition the wind movement is negligible now the effect or the influence of friction that diminishes or that reduces rapidly with altitude. So as uh, we increase the height, as we move towards higher altitude in the lower part of the troposphere, there the only resistance force is between the gas molecules. So when two gas molecules collide with each other, they will create little amount of resistance force. So as we increase the altitude, the air density will be less. So impact with gas molecules will be less. So the frictional resistance decrease towards higher altitude. Now the atmospheric zone up to which the frictional resistance is generally uh, found to occur is known as frictional layer or friction layer and this layer is generally restricted or generally found to occur within one kilometer from the ground surface it is a general altitude value however this uh, height value of the frictional layer can vary so up to one kilometer from the ground surface the effect of friction is found to occur now what happened due to this friction now when wind is moving over the earth surface because of this friction the frictional force restricts the wind movement so thereby the velocity or wind speed drops more as there is more frictional resistance so more and more frictional more drop in wind velocity now in the previous slide we see that with latitude the frictional resistance decreases so the velocity hello that will be decreased more close to the earth surface and velocity decrease occur in lesser amount as we move higher in the troposphere so frictional resistance less as we move higher in the altitudes thereby velocity decrease will also less as we move higher into the uh, troposphere so more drop in velocity found to occur close to the surface now previously we learned that the Coriolis effect will be acting more in a high speed moving object 
so now if we look at the deflection of the moving air because of the higher frictional resistance close to the surface there will be more drop in velocity more reduction in velocity so wind speed is Coriolis effect and the uh, frictional resistance force they acted over the moving uh, object moving air and thereby determines the ultimate or net movement pattern of wind thank you